Well, as you can see, my hair is basically straight. And I don't want to have to do anything to make it otherwise. I don't, I want to get up, take a shower, wash my hair, brush it out. Wash and go hair. Wash and go. But right. you know, wash and go means you look like you went and left. Yes, right. but I but I know myself. No matter how much I intend to, I won't ever put on the product and blow dry it. If you are young enough, you will escape two of the banes of my existence as a thin, young, straight-haired, flat-chested girl in a family of women who valued curly hair and some semblance of breasts. In a photo of me at three, I am smiling, Goldilocks and I probably was a pretty good-natured girl. But to get those curls took at least one Tony permanent every three months and a lot of effort on mom's part and subjugation on mine. It wasn't for my sake. I was probably not vain yet. And how I hated the smell of that Tony solution. I hated waiting with the stinking stuff on my hair while a hair dryer or a long wait or something uncomfortable impressed on my hair the code not to be straight, at least for a couple of months. Patty's hair is straight as a stick, Mom and my aunts would say, routinely, including my Aunt Pauline, whose hair also required artificial embellishment. Mine was naturally blonde, and until recently still was, I thought. Hours were spent getting my fine, straight hair to conform to McNeese and McCoskery expectations. Decades later, at a high school reunion, an old schoolmate from junior high days said, I can remember you multitasking at our Y meetings. You'd be sitting there listening to the meeting, doing your homework, and setting your hair in pin curls. This went on for far too long, and my hair got no more obedient. This is a picture of me at 11, dressed in a formal handed down by my Aunt Annabelle. The breasts you see there are as much of an embellishment as the curly hair is, and I'm getting ready to go to a dance with Harold Scott whom I have invited and with whom I remember only a night of terrified shyness on my part and anxiety about the falsies mom insisted I wear. I locked myself in the bathroom crying, insisting that I wouldn't wear them, but of course I did. After the dance, she took us to the drive-in malt shop where I said the only line of the evening I can remember, I bet I can drink my milkshake faster than you can. I was still curly when, as a senior at UCLA, I went to my roommate Diane's hairdresser to get my hair done for her wedding, for which I was maid of honor. Her hairdresser pinned it into a French roll of some type, but as I left, she said, please don't ever come back here again. Then it was the 60s and curls were out and I threw out all my bobby pins. Do you remember what those are? And while all of New York was ironing its hair at night, I was absolutely and naturally in hair fashion. I let my hair go long and straight. I was still thin and my hair was widely admired. People often asked if I ironed it. No, I answered incredulous. Why would anybody iron their hair? When I went to California on visits, mom and the aunts would look at me, shaking their heads, wondering what this world was coming to. This was the era of mini skirts too, which may be what the head shaking was about. Scroll forward decades later. Sometime during my second marriage, I decided to go for the curls again, probably to give my face a lift. Found a good hairdresser who loved perming difficult hair and who also wanted to color it. No thanks. I loved the way I looked and I wore it curled in a kind of smooth blonde afro for years. And then one year, I discovered I had a meningioma, a tumor of the lining of my brain. I read up on brain tumors and figured that putting chemicals on my hair was not the wisest thing to do. The hair is straight again, very simple, not so long, dead easy to take care of, except for haircuts. My somewhat too frank friend Arlene in New York said, thank God I was so tired of the Nancy Reagan look. My Aunt Pauline remained neutral. Arlene has become her representative. My mother said, thank God, now you're looking the way you should. She ended up a convert to straight. Something has been happening to the hair color. Between the lovely blonde tresses, there are tresses of gray or silver. 
to me, there is still a blonde feel to the thing. In fact, I thought of it as blonde flecked with white and gray until recently. For a while, my hairdresser suggested I color it, and then when I said no, decided it was beautiful after her colleagues congratulated her on the fabulous coloring job. And then I was in New York, arranging to meet a young man who had requested mentoring. The young friend who had recommended we meet had told me he was to die for handsome. Speaking to him on Arlene's phone as we arranged to meet at a local Starbucks, I said, I'm tall, blonde, and a little on the older side. And I saw Arlene's eyes roll before she said, and delusional. I figure it wasn't my imagination that I was a little older so that she must be questioning my blondness. The next time I went to my hairdresser, I asked her what color my hair was. She said, ash blonde. At Glen Echo, when I went dancing, I asked my Franca's, bordering on Ruta's dance partner, what color my hair was, and he said platinum gray. My friend Jane says plain old gray. I keep looking in the mirror and seeing a blonde. Curliness is no longer an issue. I want you to tell me what color you think it is anyway. It's um, naturally highlighted. With what? With gray. <laughs> I don't like the gray word. What's the That's basic why I use color? Natural What's the ba is it gray? It's gray. It, like a little it is. Bit of it's your not blonde. Left. No. Well, why does it look blonde to me? <laughs> You're naturally highlighted. <laughs>